Hi everyone, thanks for joining me as I share my take on our traditional first of the year meal commemorating our Haitian independence soup jumeau. For more information, be sure to visit my website susanspice.com with links in the description box. Now to get things started, let's go over the ingredients. I've got here about two carrots chopped, some green and red bell peppers chopped, four medium potatoes, Back here, we've got two turnips, and as the main star of our dish, we've got a couple of squash. One is acorn and the other butternut. I've got an interesting story on these two I'll share with you in a bit. Now over here, we've got about three stalks of celery and then we diced up. And of course, I've got some chub roast beef I have cut up and seasoned ready to go. More about that later. As far as our seasonings, I've got some goyo adobo, my personal favorite along with some seasoned salt and maggie. There's quite a few other ingredients used in this dish that I unfortunately forgot to include in the beginning, but I'll point them out as we go on. Now at the last minute, I decided to throw in some oxtail, and believe you me, I am so glad I did. I have these washed and seasoned with ippies, lime juice, and a teaspoon of adobo and seasoned salt. I put this on medium-high heat and filled it up with just enough water to cover them. Because oxtail usually takes longer to cook, I started this about half an hour earlier and added the chuck roast in after. Now if you have any questions on how to clean your meat or what in the world it is, I've put links in the description box to my website that can help you. Now in a separate pot, I've got the squashes peeled and cut into large chunks. My mother also told me that I can use the frozen squash and I regret not going with her advice because these things were so hard to cut. The lesson learned, always listen to mom. Anyway, you want to fill this up with enough water to cover all the pieces and bring it to a boil. Let it boil for about 20 minutes or so, just until it's soft. Now it's been about 30 minutes and we're going to check in on the oxtails. It's about time to add in the remaining meat. Now keep in mind you can use any kind of meat you wish. Other meats we've had in the past are goat meat, short beef ribs, beef shanks, and the list goes on. You can also have it meatless if you want. Soup jumu is very versatile in the way it's made, but the most important ingredient is the jumu, aka squash. Now, once you've got all the meat incorporated, don't forget to refill it with some water. Let it continue to cook for at least another hour. You can add water if it starts to dry out before it's cooked through. Just be sure to keep an eye on it and stir once in a while. Other things you can feel free to add is a few sprays of thyme and or a hot pepper for some spiciness. it's time to get back to our squash. It's pretty much ready when it's fork tender, as you can see here. Once the squash is cooked through, we'll put that aside to blend it all up. I was asking my parents what kind of squash is used in soup jumu. They literally told me the Haitian kind. Oh, um, okay. What is the Haitian kind of squash? Guess what their answer was. The yellow one. Anyway, why is it you can never get a decent answer from Haitian parents? So apparently we don't have the Haitian yellow kind, whatever that is. And so my dad told me to go with the acorn squash, whereas my mom told me to do the butternut squash. So to call it even, I went with one of each. Now what I'm doing here, I'm gonna blend the squash with some of the water it was boiled in until it reaches a smooth consistency, nice and creamy. Once it's blended smooth, I'm gonna transfer it over to a large pot. Some people like to strain it, However, my blender does a really good job of blending it thoroughly that it doesn't need any strain. Honestly, it's all up to you. As 
you see here, it's nice and blended through. After I added it to the pot, I've also added a 48 ounce container of chicken broth. You can use plain water if you like, but I like using chicken broth for added flavor. After that's been added, I'm going to throw in all the diced vegetables mentioned earlier in the video, except for the potatoes. at our meat. The water is almost dry and I had to add in some extra water. The meat's almost nice and tender. And what I'll do here is I'll let this simmer through until we get our other vegetables going. Get it on medium heat to get it cooking. I also added about half the small cabbage chopped and washed thoroughly and the turnips as I forgot to add them in earlier. You want this to cook until the vegetables, especially the carrots, are cooked through, roughly about 15 to 20 minutes. Now that our vegetables and broth has cooked down some, we will now add in potatoes, okay? And we'll also add in about one cup of pasta, any kind of your choice, which I'll do here momentarily. I'll be using ziti here. I don't know what it is about soup jumo, but it won't be soup jumo without the pasta. It always has to have some kind of macaroni in it. Spaghetti, some people really like to use rigatoni, some people like to use elbow macaroni. Honestly, it really depends on your personal preference. time we will also add in the cooked meat, juices and all. Once thoroughly mixed, you're going to use this opportunity to sample the liquid and adjust for salt. I ended up adding garlic powder, onion powder, half a maggi cube, and additional goya with seasoned salt to taste. Just season it to your liking. potatoes will only take about 10 minutes to cook from the point you added them. So as it cooks, it will continue to thicken the soup to the right consistency. Just be careful not to overcook it. Be aware, as the soup sits, it will thicken even further. So once the potatoes and pasta is fully cooked through, the soup jume will be done and ready to serve.
hope you enjoyed watching this video with me and learning how to make my version of soup juma. You can always alter it to fit your liking. Thanks for watching and again, be sure to visit my website www.susanspice.com.